Hello everyone, welcome to KGB Bible Stories. Today on this beautiful day, which is the seventh day Sabbath, we have our continuation of the book, The Law of Life by E.J. E. Wagner. And this book is just dedicated for the teaching of the Ten Commandments, each of them, um, and teaching them how to keep them with the Spirit of God, and showing the deepness of the law of God. And so today we begin in page 103. And first of all, Ronnie would like to say a comment before we pray. Okay, right now we deal with the commandments right now. We're dealing with also not just the letter, but also the spiritual of the law. <clears throat> Remember the law. And spirituality, said, you mean. <clears throat> spiritual, I meant the law of spiritual. Remember the law is very broad. And like when, like when we look at, even though we're adopting this thing is thou shalt not steal. What does it mean elsewhere that thou shalt not steal? It's, more, it's just not just taking something that's not your own. It goes further than that. <clears throat> Amen. Let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to the name of Jesus Christ. We pray that you please uh, be with us in this reading time where your law is being exalted. And, I, and we pray as thy law is being exalted and as we're seeing the moral law as a mirror and as we're seeing our spots lord give us thy righteousness that we may exceed the righteousness of the scribes and pharisees in jesus holy name amen page 103 the eighth commandment exodus 20 verse 15 in the king james version it says thou shall not steal in this revised version it says you shall not steal there are very few people who need to be told that this is wrong to break into a shop and rob a cash box. That burglary, house breaking, pocket picking, That's so burglary. forth. Huh? That's burglary. Burglary, thank you. House breaking, pocket picking, and so forth are criminal and sinful acts. This all, these are all recognized as vulgar crimes. And because of this, many suppose the commandments that forbid such things are out of date. And so far as Christians are concerned and that Christianity has outgrown them, many people have said, what do we need of the commandment? You shall not steal. Everybody knows that stealing is wrong, even as Savage shows by his attempt to conceal a theft that he knows that it is not the right thing. But we must again repeat that the commandment is exceeding broad, surpassing man's highest thought of perfection. While all with the possible exception of some who from infancy had been trained to theft, know that the grosser acts of which the civil law takes notice are sinful. There are very many professed Christians who in their daily business violate the Eighth Commandment, without the slightest compunction. 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 <clears throat> so there's Christians who in their daily business, they violate the Eighth Commandment without the slightest compunction. The practice of the majority. This is not an uncommon thing for people to charge different prices for the same goods. To expose one class of goods for inspection into the liver an inferior quality to take advantage of the customer's ignorance or in various and other ways to gain more than the annual worth of a thing sold. Everything of this kind is just as really stealing as to pick one's pocket of his or his purse. Really will be her purse, right? Because men really don't carry mm. purse. It's, it might be her purse. Yet it is continually condoned on the ground that it is business. The fact that everybody does, does it seems to many businessmen, even though they profess Christians to be sufficient justification for any act, they seem to have the idea that if the majority of the people are united in, a, in any practice, the Lord will regard it as right, even though it is wrong in itself. And we're on page 104. Indeed, not only with respect to the commandments, but with all the others, the general custom of the people is of paramount weight with very many. Call attention to a wrong practice and the reply will be, everybody does it. 
or present some report of the bylaw law and they will say nobody does that any day nowadays thinking that they have their by settled the matter but the lord says exodus 23 2 you shall not follow a multitude to do evil and proverbs 2 21 though hand join in hand the wicked shall not be unpunished much of the business that is done done in this world is that devil's business and will not stand the test of heaven matthew 7 12 therefore all things whatsoever you would that man should do unto you do ye even so to them for this is the law and the prophets mm -hmm. <clears throat> like you said especially in the business world that's how they do things right now in the business world like for example if you have someone under your under your hire and uh, it's like a work, uh, workman is worthy of his hire and everything. And now, and even in corporate America right now, or in businesses around the world is, they do not want to, right now, they, back in the days, for right now we live in 2018, back in the days when people used to hire some people, like when things used to be made in America nowadays. <laughs> I'll give you an example, in that modern days, things were made in America back then. There was a lot of jobs in America and people were getting people were getting paid pretty well and everything they can make stuff in america which means there was a lot of jobs but now now in modern day times there's a lot of things are not even shipped in america right now because this is dealing with the business practice a lot of stuff goes overseas right now like a lot of times american product is made overseas and what do they do <clears throat> it's made overseas by lower wage worker which means they go to a very, very poor country, and what do they do? They, they live in a, a very yeah, poor they, country. Yeah, they, they pay them a very, very low price, which means they're actually... They're, taking they're, advantage they're of ta yeah, <clears throat> They're taking advantage of another country, doing this low amount of wage and everything to get work out of them, besides paying them uh, a lot more money and everything. So what they do is they take advantage. So they do... So basically, that's they're basically not even paying the people any money and everything, and that's... Basically, still, that's not very fair business practice that happens. And it happens a lot of days nowadays, since nowadays we have the what is quote unquote the stock market. And nowadays, what the stock market is, is so many people are so greedy in money right now, is they'll undercut people's jobs to do what? They'll, they'll try to pay people a lower amount of money so they do what? They can get more of a profit. Even, even, in, my, even in my life, though, right now, about almost five years ago, this was very fair business practices. We had, we had to switch over our company where they came in and they did what? They tried to, everyone was getting paid a certain amount. They tried to reduce all our wages and everything. And uh, for the job we do is saying, because they want, what did they want to do? The company wanted to make even more money. But if it was, the, if it was for them, would they want that done to themselves? <clears throat> the answer to that would be a no. You know, because if, if, if you want to do these business practices and everything, would you really want it done to yourself? You would really honestly think, should I do it? What I want it done to me, should you be doing it to somebody else? <clears throat> it's kind of like the golden rule and everything. You really should do it to others because you really want done unto yourself, to be oh, honest. There we go. That's the book <clears throat> I was looking for. <laughs> and, uh, yes. No, yes. And uh, and like nowadays, like nowadays right now, it's, there's... Because we got to put this even modern day world right now because this is... We have Amazon, everything else, but you want to sell stuff at a, when people sell things and everything, people rip off people and that thing too. <clears throat> so you don't want, you don't want to, so when you sell something and everything, you don't want to sell some, and also thing too is like, <clears throat> as people want to sell some inferior product, like I said, some inferior product for a good amount of money and everything. And that's one thing we don't want to do. We want to sell something that you would want to use yourself, really want to use yourself and sell it out there so you're not stealing from somebody. Because if you sell something that can break any moment and everything, and you obtain money from it, and guess what? <clears throat> that, that's false, that's stealing. It's called like, like when you deal buy cars and everything, it's called the lemon law. You're not supposed to sell something you know is going to break. You want to be upright and honest on uh, what you're selling to them and everything. And sometimes if you can, um, here's another thing too, you can tell somebody like, okay, this has a problem with it, or this this is a problem if they really want to have it then and then you're up front and tell them about it so there's many like so you want to, when you go in your business you want to be very honest on how you do things okay 
can I have a comment on that? Um, I don't know if I said it in this video, probably in another video. Maybe I have and from the same book. My comment was that many people in the Seventh-day Adventist Church in particular, and it could include in any church that has this practice. Okay, so every person that gives tithes and offerings, it's recorded on a book, how much you gave and the date. Okay, that's the record that the church keeps. And I'm sure this is a record that's kept by any church, probably even the Catholics. Mm. Okay, but I'm, today I'm dealing with those who receive a return tax. And that return tax is for you to say, I helped this church and I gave my tithes and offerings, but now you take it to the tax office and what do you say? I want my money back. And what do you do with that money? You may tax it, you may tithe it again and you must just spend it in your own pleasure. But aren't you being a crook? Because if the tithe and the offerings belong to God, what business do you have to do with getting a tax refund? Mm -hmm. What is that? That's robbing. Because you're so, that's something that belongs to God. That's not something you're supposed to be taxing. That has nothing of benefit to you. God gives you 100% of the money and tells you to give your tithe and offerings according to your conscience and according to the Bible. Then what business have you to do with getting a tax refund? Mm -hmm. you're, ro you're robbing the country. And that's, a, that's coming up in later on in this chapter where they talk about tithe and offer. <laughs> exactly, but isn't that foolish? Uh, yes, I didn't. I I never I never believed on doing that. Yeah, that's true because I can never find anywhere, even in the old scriptures, where the nation of Israel even did that thing. And also, yeah, I agree. They want the to use nation it. of Israel didn't ask for a tax refund, right? Yeah, they did I yeah, I didn't see where they had. <laughs> They didn't, they didn't ask for something to come up and everything. Yeah, I agree and everything, because if you're going to give that money and everything, it's kind of like you're not counting on that one afterwards and everything. Exactly, it's not yours. <laughs> yeah, so it's, yeah, you're, so you're actually, yeah, you're using that as a standard deduction in your tax form, and I agree that should not ever be done. Like I said, I, I never done that, and I know, because I, I never believed that you ever should do that. Exactly. Personally, yeah, that's actually wrong. I, yeah, I agree with that with my wife 100% on that one. And now, if let's say if you tell them I don't want the tax refund thingy, mm -hmm. and they still give it to you, go ahead and burn it. Yes. And put burn it in your sink, where there's the water, rather immediately burn it, and that's it. Yes. But you're not supposed to go to the government and give you that tax refund because that money never belonged to you first place, and it never will. And I agree, the law of the and here's the thing too. <laughs> When you deal with that thing right now, is you got the law of the land, and you also got the law of God and everything. I agree that the, <clears throat> like for example, when we deal, like for example, when we deal with divorce, when we deal with divorce in our last chapter right now, the law of the land says you can divorce. But what does God say? Marriage is until death do you part. Now, what are you going to follow? The law of the land, or are you going to follow the law of God? God says, "Myth is until death do you part." And what Romans say is you're married until your spouse dies, and then you're free from the what? What bound you to that person and everything. So you must follow God and everything. So like I said, I understand that the law of the land, and we're in the United States right now, is you can use your tithes and, op you can use your tithes and offering as part of your taxes, but I can't find nowhere in the word of God saying to actually do that. So we must follow what? The law of God and not, and not, not otherwise. Yeah. Acts chapter 5 verse 29 it says then Peter and the other apostles answered and said we ought to obey God rather than man rather than the government we are to obey God rather than men let's and, go ahead and do our and when you, and what I'm just saying right now right now oh. we're not this today we're not going to be really dealing with next next time we do this one next week and then we're going to be dealing with the Titan offering and I would like the watch to bring that up again in, the, in that portion and we'll bring that subject up, the most important thing in that subject. And because we all know we're supposed to pay a tithe and everything. That's a common thing, but the, what my wife's saying is one that's often overlooked and everything. So she bring it up next week on that one. So we have it in the recording once again. And another thing, I don't like the word paying tithe because yeah. that seems like a bill. Uh, I like the word to give. Okay, yeah, giving tithe, yes. Because paying is like, you made it a responsibility and not like something a righteous thing uh -huh. nevertheless let's go ahead and continue 
We're still on page 104, business methods. We're in that section where it says business methods. Mm -hmm. Making a living. The false idea that it is the business of every man to make a living leads to many thefts, both small and great. Competition is very keen, and there are many engaged in business who have no conscience of right or wrong, who fear not God, not to regard man. The unscrupulous custom which they have introduced into various lines of business have led many Christian people little by little to lower their own standard. The desire to compete with their rivals to keep business, page 105, has blunted their fine perception of right and wrong until things that would once have shocked them now seem to be right and necessary. So these business people, what are they doing? It says they have no conscience of right and wrong, and they're not fearing God. Neither are they regarding men. By the term business methods, men commonly understand something different. From the somewhat old-fashioned principles laid down in the Bible, business and religion are thought to be separate things, and as much as men are exhorted to be diligent in business, men persuade themselves that whatever is business is correct. They forget that at the same time they are diligent in business. Proverbs 22, 29. They are to be fervent in spirit and serving the Lord. Romans 12, 11. The sole business of all men is to serve the Lord. Ephesians, pardon me, Ecclesiastes 12, 13, and 14. Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of men. For God shall bring every work in business and lifestyle, every work into judgment, with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. God makes it his business to give us a living, and he alone can do it. It is a grave error to suppose that a living can be made out of methods which have death in them. Every sin, every deviation from the law of God has death in it and can end only in death. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14, 6. Therefore, only the way of truth, Christ's own way, can give life. Or in other words, can give one a living. And as a matter of fact, many people glory in their jobs and they're like oh i have this really good job blah 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 but and then so they're not giving god the glory that god is the one that's providing you for that job and also too yeah like for example like this you don't yeah i don't agree you don't want the glory and job like right now like me i have a good job it's it's my job and everything that i have to do but um, who's the one that provided you know, the lord provided and everything exactly. i i don't and everything like me like me i don't sit there I'm not gonna sit there like when I go get gas. I call the man sir and everything. I don't. I, I don't. I don't look upon the job anywhere different from anyone. That's their job. That's their job and everything. I look down on them. But also too is when you're in the when you're in the when you're at work and everything, <clears throat> is you try to be the best you can be. Try to get the try to do the hardest work you can be to get to get well, your that's job. That's a good point right there. <clears throat> yes. As I said, when we deal with this level of even when we deal with Ty, like when we like next week when we deal with Ty and everything. Is one important thing is we're going to talk about is how you should live your life because if you don't live your life a certain way it's going to be it's going to now even paying tithes is going to become a burden or you're not living your life a certain way so it's going to, we're going to kind of get a, what he's probably not going to deal with in this book is simple solutions to to the whole entire issue and everything that might actually help you out and everything because so if I come back to your work and everything is is when you get to work and everything, is you want to do as best as you can and everything. Like me, I, I go to work and everything. I'm known as a very, very good worker and everything because I get there, I get things done. Like, and I, like even with my coworkers, they, they need me to help them with something. I, I go, I like, I'll help them out with working things and everything. And uh, they have to carry weight. I help them carry weight and everything. So you want to do as best as you can at your work and everything. Try to be the best you can be. And uh. You know, and that's and that's how you want to do it and everything, because he's now that because right now if you got the best you can be, is you're now not giving it your you're not giving it your all. You're you're still robbing right there and everything. You do you do always want to give it your all. And now we get back to the fact. And uh, and I, I and I agree right now if some work does not want to pay you well and everything, but if sometimes even if the work is actually not doing properly to you, you still want to give it your all. And, and as possible, you still want to give it your all and everything, even though they're not. 
just because they're not following the Lord doesn't mean you don't want to give it your all either and everything. And that's, uh, and that's how that's how you want to be in 